Hi, I'm David Dodge. Welcome to Green Energy Futures. Deep energy retrofits of old homes are becoming more and more desirable thanks to rising energy costs, climate change, and homeowners' desire to reduce energy use and produce their own energy. And every once in a while, a super fascinating project comes along, like this one. Jim Sandercock wanted to preserve the bones of his 1951 story and a half home in Edmonton, Alberta, but he wanted to retrofit all the way to net zero. So Sandercock signed up for a pilot modeled after the Dutch energy sprung strategy for retrofitting homes to net zero. Um, we realized that we're bleeding a lot of heat and a lot of uh, energy is being wasted and the house is kind of not comfortable. So in the middle of summer, the upstairs, the second story is way too hot for the kids' bedrooms, so they sleep in the basement. And then in the wintertime, the basement's way too cold and so nobody goes down there. Jim is also the chair of the Alternative Energy Program at Nate, so he knows a thing or two about the benefits of energy efficiency. But they also didn't want to bulldoze their existing home and waste all those materials. It's got great bones and like a lot of houses that are old, there's a whole bunch of embodied carbon and a whole bunch of value of like heartwood and stuff uh, for the structure and so we didn't want to just throw it all away. And so what we decided to do is wrap an envelope or a big giant tea cozy as Amory Lovins would say and just plop that right on top of the house and make the house way more energy efficient. And we're aiming to actually become net zero with a 1951 house. So Jim and his family signed up to pilot a new kind of deep energy retrofit that keeps the existing home and turns it into an energy efficient net zero home. And we're using a system called Energy Sprong, which came out of the Netherlands. And Energy Sprong just means energy leap in Dutch. And basically what they're doing is they're scanning the whole house, going off site, taking those scans, building new walls that'll go over top of the old walls. So they go off site and they rebuild all that and then they come back to site and use a crane and lift it all into place and then blow in insulation after the fact. Here's how it works, starting with the old walls of the 70-year-old home. Yeah, so originally the, the original 2x4 with fiberglass on the inside, probably the 2x4 construction with the insulation probably was giving somewhere between 8 and 11 for an R value uh, in terms of like the actual R value. And then with the addition of anywhere from eight to 10 inches of additional insulation on the outside, we're now gonna be hitting about R40. We are looking at the very first of the walls that have been installed. And you can actually see there'll be a big gap here for blown insulation. So it'll be up against, up against, the, up against the outer edge, but also the two by fours don't come all the way back. So we have a thermal break, it's called, where the heat of the house does not touch directly onto something like wood that would take that heat away we'll have insulation packed in behind here. And so that'll, that'll give me a thermal break, it's called, with all that insulation in that space. And you can also see down there the, the window that they scanned where the window actually was. They built where the window actually will be. And they'll put a window out on the outside edge of this. They've got a window. And then later they'll come and actually pop my inside window out. So all I have to do is move the bed. They'll take the window away and they'll do a little bit of trim, done. That's my entire experience as a homeowner of disruption. Once the walls were flown in by crane and filled with insulation, they are 16 inches thick and they clock in at R40. They also beefed up the 1951 Homes Foundation. So what they did is they came along and they excavated around the entire basement. And so they used a, 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 a little bit of hand digging and then they used a hydrovac. And this depth, this width right here, that, that, they actually went down all the way down to the footing of the foundation. And then they went around that entire thing with a type of foam called EPS. The roof line was adjusted to accommodate a new large veranda on the front and more insulation was added as well. In addition, the entire envelope of the home was sealed up tight to reduce air and heat leakage. Everything in the mechanical room uses very efficient heat pumps and runs on electricity. So in a net zero home, our mechanical system is totally electric. And so we don't have any natural gas coming to the house at all. This is the interior part of our heat pump. It can be two to 400% efficient compared to a natural gas uh, system, which is great and it's all electric. Then uh, that takes care of heating and cooling the house. Then in terms of our hot water, we've got um, this heat pump hot water tank. 
We also want to change the air on a reg really regular basis. So our house used to leak about five to six air changes per hour. This is actually under a controlled system giving us air, fresh air, but it's recovering that heat or recovering that cooling in the summer. So it's way more efficient for our house than just leaking the heat out of our house. And then to reduce the number of holes in our walls, we actually went with a, a ductless system. So this is an air source heat pump as well for our dryer and it's way more efficient and we've got less holes in our walls so there's less cooling of our house in the winter. All of the energy for the home is provided on a net annual basis by a 14.7 kilowatt solar system. Because we're completely electrified as a net zero home now, um, all of our electricity for heating and cooling and our you know computer and our lights, all taken care of by solar. On an annual basis, we make as much energy as we consume but because of a number of things, like we got rid of the natural gas line, we don't actually have a lot in the way of utilities. We'll basically be making money on an annual basis instead of paying money for our utilities you know, off into our retirement. We mentioned the heat pump water heater and clothes dryer, but there's one more pretty cool energy efficient appliance in this home. So appliances are a really important part of a net zero home. And so we got off of a natural gas stove. We've got an induction stove that it, it cooks really well. Um, and it's twice as efficient as a standard uh, appliance. And the other thing is it, it doesn't get hot on the surfaces. And so it's a lot safer and a lot easier to clean up. And we could probably make our boiler tea in like 40 seconds. We had to ask, what's up with the swatches of color on the stucco of the old wall? Now, the most difficult part of trying to figure out your house is what color do you want? And so you can see, my wife has had a lot of different colors in mind and we went to all our neighbors and we got votes on what was and wasn't acceptable. The kids all love purple. Turns out we're not doing purple. Uh, and then you can also get maybe a hint that maybe we started moving towards the teals and now we're getting into like the infinite teal question quandary. And so we're not sure which color, but boy, we have to make that decision like really quick. Jim's family eventually settled on teal. So, What's the verdict on the reno? It, it's going really well. Uh, my, my poor bald head doesn't feel so cold in the winter. Um, our upstairs is livable in the summer for our kids in their bedrooms. They don't have to sleep in the basement anymore. Uh, and like I said, the utilities, we are making money on our utilities right at this time of year instead of having to pay. The energy sprung thing was a lot of fun to have put onto our house. Uh, it gathered a lot of attention from the neighborhood in terms of like, what is going on here? And it's, it's going to be one of those tools for us to actually retrofit a lot of old houses. In future episodes, we'll talk to Net Zero expert Peter Amarongan of Butterwick Projects about what they've learned using the energy sprung strategy to renovate this home. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. Uh, we won't need the natural gas at all. So we're going to save ourselves uh, about five, $600 a year on simply just not being connected. And if I do that, I'll get in lots of trouble. So, <laughs> but anyway.